How's it going guys? Thanks for checking the video out. I want to show you an application here which has kind of blown my mind and has got so many possibilities. I kind of like to think of it as a cross between like Isotope RX and Melodyne because you can separate different instruments, you can separate different stems, but then you can rework them within the application. But then you can also like just steal stuff for remixes. You can take a snare out, you can take a vocal chop, but even more than that, you can add effects, you can harmonize stuff, you can re-pitch, you can tune. It's just kind of crazy. The best way for me to describe it is just to kind of show it and we can see what, what it's all about. So this is RipX and this is deep audio. So this is using kind of AI sensibilities to allow you to dive deep into your audio, take stuff out, rework stuff, it's crazy. I'm just gonna bring a track into this and show you exactly what it's all about. So let's just grab a track and let's just drag it in. So we can either work on it as a single instrument or multiple instruments and sounds. This is a full track, so we're gonna go for multiple instruments. And it'll ask us what we want to extract, what we want it to separate. Now the, the key one here, lots of applications can do voice, bass, drums, percussions, but separate guitar and piano is quite interesting. So let's just go on rip and it's going to work its magic and just separate this all for us. Okay, so through the power of video editing, we're now on just the full version. And it said it was gonna take about seven minutes to do this, but it didn't really feel like that long. It did it pretty quickly. So the first thing to say is that Deep Audio, it contains Deep Create and Deep Remix. It's kind of a massive topic, um, what these individual programs are doing, but Deep Audio is kind of everything in one of those two, and it gives you so many possibilities. And the one thing I've kind of realized is that I can't cover everything because there's so much. I'm just gonna kind of show you what I use it for and what I'm finding it useful for. So first of all, we can isolate layers. So let's just isolate this kind of string patch to start off with, and this is like a keyboard part, but it's a string patch. So it's, it's identified it as strings. <laughs> Cool. And we can just solo it by just clicking solo there, or we can just mute everything except, you know, just listen to everything except for that. We've got some bass there. So let's go on to some vocals, for example, because this is where things get really interesting with the stuff over on the right hand side where we can just let me show you. I feel like signing off for someone else just for a day. Okay, so it's isolated those vocals. They're pretty heavily affected in the original mix, so we're getting a few artifacts there, but you kind of get that with everything. So what I want to go up to is the this pitch up here where we can kind of create some chords and we can create some harmonies, we can tune stuff, we can take stuff out, change notes. One thing that I really like, if we set a loop around this section here and play it, we can kind of audition these in real time. So if I just press play. I feel like signing off for someone else just for a day. It's just gonna update I for us. Like off for someone else just for a day. Okay, so the harmony is obviously relative to the key. Now I think this one is in D major. So down at the bottom, if I go to set musical scale and I can just go to D. So it's going to be relative to the key. And that's important when you're doing chords as well. When you're shifting pitch, you can make everything lock to pitch, do whatever you want. So now that we've got the key engaged, let's take a listen to this where we can kind of just create a harmony. I feel like signing off for someone else just for a day. Nice. I feel like signing off for someone else just for a day. That's cool. We can create some chords around it as well. I feel like signing off for someone else just for a day. Okay, nice. So that's all kind of real time where we can just sort of bung that in there. But if we wanted to match the pitch of everything to the key, we could select everything and just go like pitch to scale. Just get it exactly on pitch. We can do the same thing with vibrato and we can make it so that it's exactly on pitch. So in that way, it's kind of similar to Melodyne and Auto-Tune, I guess. But there's a few interesting things here which make it so interesting for like a remix kind of tool. So if we just unsolo that voice for a minute, let's take a listen to the bar before. Oh, by the way, it's automatically located where the bars are and it's worked out it's 105 BPM, it's in 4.4. It's worked out the bars for me, which is super handy. I feel like signing off for someone else just for a day. Okay, so let's say at the beginning there, we actually want there to be a crash. Well, what we can do, so let's just select the master layer and then let's go over to uh, sounds 
and let's just include like a symbol. So let's go to symbols here and we've got a symbol. It sounds crap, but let's put it in there. We can just drag it in and we can add stuff into there. So now when we play it, it's cool to be able to extract all this stuff, but then add stuff in as well. So we can get really creative with what stuff we want in there or what stuff we don't want in there. But that's not all. We can actually like bring in instruments on this as well. So acoustic guitar, alto sax is hilarious. Right, let's bring it in. And we can just drag it onto the note that we want it to be on. <laughs> that's well too high. Let's bring it down to like a D for example, because we're nursing D. And then we can lengthen it. That's so funny. And then down here, we can just bring down the, the kind of curve of it. And over on the left-hand side, if you see the interactive help, you've got just little pointers that can kind of shove you in the right direction if you're struggling with something for the interface. But as well as including loads of different instruments, as well as being able to kind of add loads of different instruments on there as well, this isolation tool is very, very interesting for me. So let's say, for example, you've got a track and you really like the snare sound on it, but you can't really just isolate that snare in any really good way to use in your track. Well, with Deep Audio, we can. So if we just get rid of this awful sounding sax, go away. Let's go over to the drums, for example. Let's just solo the drums. Let's say we like this snare. This snare here. And if you just click it, it just plays just that bit. It's, it's blowing my mind. So if we just select that one snare, then we can go File, export and you can save just that one snare that you can then include in any of your productions. So you can just grab like a kick out of here or a snare or like a bass sound as well. Let's go to the, I oh know, let's go to the bass and just have a listen to just the bass. So let's go and solo just the bass. You could take just that last note and then sample that and you can just export just that one note or you can export a load of separate notes. But then within those drum tracks, got like a filter on it. So let's say we wanna add some reverb just to this one specific snare. All we need to do is select that snare drum, go into the reverb over here and drag it up. Bit of a weird reverb, let's put some reverse on it. So it's just going to add it to that one individual note, that one individual kind of slice. It's not going to affect the rest of the track. Let's say we just want to add it to like one snare. So let's try this one. Let's add it to just that. So even if I just click it, it's just isolating just that one. Let's go on to the reverb. We're about delay. So you can just go in on like a micro level and just adapt each individual sound. And it's almost like you're mixing notes. You're not mixing the entire track. You can just go into a specific note, a specific word, a specific phrase and add reverb and different kind of remix effects as well to just one specific element of the track, which I find unbelievably useful. One thing that I haven't actually dived into yet is the repair stuff. So you can get rid of like some background noise. You can get rid of loads and loads of stuff that is kind of repair centered processes you can do on just these instruments. So say you've got like a snare that went through the kind of process of just separating it. It's got some of the extraneous sounds in there. Well, you can get rid of them by just using this repair. You can just do it on like a, a one note level or you can do it on a track level. It's kind of the opposite of how we're used to doors working because typically we're working in tracks. If you've got a snare track, you can do something to all those snares. Well, here you can do that if you just select all the snares, but you can also do it to just one individual sound. And to me, that's unbelievably useful. So it's the kind of application that I've only scratched the surface of. I've been playing with it for maybe an hour and 
it's just so incredible. There's so many things you can do with it that I'm kind of just wanting to press stop now and just play with it a little bit more. You can get a version of this if you check out the, the link in the description. I'm not being paid for this. Like I genuinely do think it's just an awesome application and it's so fun. Um, there's so much stuff that you can do with it that it's worth just checking out the free trial, if nothing else, and just seeing how creative you can get with it. I'll see you again soon. Take care.